Now, of course, the use for this brush, let's just use a side that hasn't been used. People almost always see it demoed like this. Let's divide that. Increase my Z intensity. And there you can see. Now, because of the nature of the blob brush was that they wanted to create this kind of, it's almost like welding. Um, oh, I forgot the term. Uh, but when you're welding, you leave behind that trail. He was trying to create this really organic quality, real world behavior. Remember, real world behavior. So creating as a welding bead, B-E-A-D, that's right. Thanks, Charles. So a welding bead, you know, would, would fit this behavior to some extent, specifically this guy right here. And so it's not going to have a lot of depth. It's not expected to shoot out, right? But it is expected to have an edge. So the behavior of this brush is take this little tiny face, blow it up so it becomes a big face, and then keep all the small faces around here so that you get a nice clean transition. Now that might seem terribly boring to sit there and study how this, how basically the different shape of a sphere. I mean that's really all we just did. We studied the different shape of a sphere. But again I think this is one of the differences between mastering the program because it's those little tiny differences that PixLogic puts all of its energy in and it's those little tiny differences that, um, you know, that make a difference in your sculpt and really in you being able to use ZBrush. So if you want to see a really awesome use of the blob brush that's totally un... I've never seen it before. Make sure you check out Daniel Bystead's workshop or one of the, prim uh, one of the free kind of promos for it. He uses the blob brush for texturing. And it does this kind of stuff, but in the texture. How crazy is that? I thought I saw that. He was uh, using it to texture hard surface stuff and add damage. It was brilliant. Okay. So that's a little bit of a look at that algorithm. Now, I'm trying to decide, do we go into stroke or something else? Well, let's do this. I want to go into stroke. This is a perfect segment, segue, for me to talk about strokes and stroke types. But we'll probably get into, into that in more detail a little later. So you have the algorithm. Now, each one of these algorithms, you know, you can apply them differently. You've got the normal dots stroke. I can't draw. Okay, you're going to have to just keep this in your head. I won't be able to draw on the screen. A lot of people ask me what's dots versus freehand. And um, this is one of those things where I was explaining earlier about how there's little tiny dots. Basically, all brushes are really a dot brush. The freehand brush was the first attempt to push them together. But the algorithm behind freehand could not do what Lazy Mouse does. So we tried for a while to make freehand work for creating a better stroke. It didn't work, pushed as far as we could, and then Lazy Mouse solved, solved the problem. So dots and freehand, they're basically the exact same thing. Don't worry about it. Just leave it at dots. It, it's a little bit of a faster computation. Um, and freehand, you don't get anything. So you've got freehand. You've got drag rectangle, which means you're just drawing out one instance. And then you've got this other one, spray. And this one's really cool 
with the blob brush. That's why I wanted to show it to you. It's like instant asteroid. You need to create an asteroid? Well, that's your brush. <laughs> you need to create some mold? That's your brush. Let me try something I haven't tried, but I wanted to. I'm going to go into dots. I'm going to set my depth high. Uh, I'm going to press Alt. Now, I had to press Alt to make that, which is weird, because Ziad is on. So why would I have to press Alt to push out? But that's one thing you need to keep in mind. Okay, not all of these brushes are going to ex they're going to um, behave exactly how you expect them when you do things like, you know, raise the embed. Like for example, my assumption would be it would push the form out more. Okay, that's really important to keep in mind. It does not work that way. I have spent weeks of my life studying these brushes because remember you know these there's like a there's a bunch of magicians developing this and they don't talk like normal humans <laughs> sometimes um, meetings with them are unique uh, so you have to dive in to understand this yourself a lot and I like I said I've spent weeks trying to understand it uh, and um, it's just it's pure and simple sometimes not all parts of the algorithm behave as you would expect with all the other features so I just want to put that out there so that if you're studying this and you start to go to embed or you start to go to some feature and it doesn't behave correctly and it throws your understanding for a loop I've been there don't sweat it it is quite possible that you're not crazy it's just the algorithm wasn't designed to work with that feature as well as it could have. Okay, so um, so that's really I think about all we need to talk about in terms of brush types. There's a lot more in here. Like we didn't look at these curves because they're using this insert mesh dot um, or the insert mesh dot here for insert these. Um, uh, cylinders or the insert multi mesh or what about these guys crease or the curve lines because okay, they're so massive that it's a totally separate beast so I want to treat that as a separate beast and hopefully my voice holds we're at an hour now <laughs>